Good morning, Pastor Ed here from Hope Lutheran Church in Freehold, New Jersey, with daily devotions for October the 4th, 2021, as we begin a, a new week. Uh, we've moved now into the, the Old Testament book of Exodus. Uh, the story kind of continues, and we'll have to kind of catch up a little bit uh, and then get into um, this particular reading, which was our large reading in Sunday yesterday, which, as I've said in the last couple of weeks, I break down now. Uh, into uh, the six days uh, of our daily devotions to take a closer look, a more in-depth look at uh, a lot of the things that uh, I don't have time to talk about in my sermon or um, and so forth. So this is, gives me a unique opportunity to do that. But before we get into it, uh, this morning's uh, reading, let's, let's begin with um, uh, responsive prayer number one, suffrages out of the Lutheran Book of Worship. Let us begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. and He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness. O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems my life from the grave. He, he crowns me with mercy and loving kindness. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Let us pray. God of all people, you remembered your children who were enslaved in Egypt, and by the power of your name you set them free. Remember us and free us from slavery to sin by the power of your name. Amen. Well, our reading this morning, um, the, the large reading that we had, on, uh, had yesterday in church had excerpts from Exodus 2 and Exodus 3 and Exodus 4. And again, I'm going to break that down into, uh, well, five days, and then we're also going to have uh, the gospel reading uh, on Saturday, the sixth day. Um, the first section that we're going to deal with this morning is from uh, the second chapter of Exodus, verses 23 to 25. After a long time, the king of Egypt died, and the Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out, out of the slavery, the, out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob. And God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. After a long time, uh, our reading begins. And so we kind of have to backtrack because a long time has gone by. Um, the last time we were together, we were talking about Jacob. Uh, we were talking about how he stole his brother Esau's uh, birthright, you know, all the rights of being the firstborn. He also stole uh, his brother Esau's the blessing um, that was part of that covenant uh, with Abraham and with their father Isaac, and now should by all rights have gone to Esau. Um, but Jacob, in his kind of sneaky, conniving ways, uh, cheating ways, uh, had taken it from him. Well, he runs off uh, to back to Haran, 
um, to his mother's people. She spirits him away to protect him from the, the vengeance and hatred of, of Esau. Uh, uh, Jacob kind of meets his match. Um, it, maybe it seems to kind of run in the family, of course, because he goes back to his mother, uh, Rebecca's brother, Laban, uh, and uh, Laban pulls one over on Jacob. Uh, Jacob falls in love with, with Rachel. Uh, he works seven years uh, for Laban in order to have the, the opportunity to marry her. The, the day comes, they have a great big wedding. He wakes up the next morning, and uh, Laban had substituted the other sister, her sister Leah instead. And so now Jacob has, has been tricked and cheated, <laughs> kind of turn around his fair play. He works another seven years. Uh, for Rachel, and so he's he ends up being away for for a total of about 20 years. He has this uneasy relationship with uh, uh, with his relative, who's become now his father-in-law Laban. He eventually uh, returns, uh, um, is is reunited, uh, and, and in a sense reconciled with his brother Esau. Uh, but on the way there, he uh, he wrestled. With the stranger uh, by the on the banks of the river Jabbok, um, turns out that it was God, uh, apparently, and he is renamed Jacob, the supplanter, the one who cheats and steals, becomes Israel, he who strives with God, and he has twelve sons, and of those twelve sons, his favorite, kind of making the same mistake that his parents did, Isaac uh, favored Esau, Rebecca favored him, Jacob, now Israel. He favored his son Joseph. Uh, wonderful story. Starts in about chapter 36, 37 of, uh, of Genesis. The whole, uh, whole story of Joseph, what his brothers did to him. Um, the, the, the long and the short of it, or the short of it, I guess, is that um, Jacob, Israel, now known as Israel, and all of his family ends up in Egypt. There was a time of famine. Joseph had risen to prominence despite um a lot of ugly things that his brother's done to him. And there's the classic scene at the end of the book of Genesis where uh, he says to his brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, or God turned it into good. I like that translation uh, perhaps the best. God turned it into good. And that's a theme that we see over and over again uh, in Scripture, don't we? That, you know, that we, we're constantly messing things up. We're doing the wrong things. And, and in spite of our mistakes, God somehow... Um, clearly uh, turns it uh, into good, makes something good of it. You know, he stole the birthright, um, stole the blessing, but God's blessing was not going to be thwarted. It was going to be through Jacob now. And that's why um, in the passage this morning, it talks about the covenant with, with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Well, of course, they all end up in, in Egypt. And um, there are... They are uh, aliens there. They are uh, foreigners there. Uh, they stay there many, many years because Joseph was an important person. But as the years go by, uh, you know, generations pass. Um, the Egyptians become uneasy with the Israelites being there. Uh, they become very numerous. Uh, the, uh, the Egyptians resent that. And um, uh, they, they finally... Uh, a new pharaoh, many, you know, number of pharaohs had come and gone. Uh, but then there's one who, who doesn't remember anything of the history, and he enslaves uh, the, the Israelites, um, um, forces them into, into harsh labor. And it's that's the context for um, uh, our reading this morning, leading into uh, God's appearance to call Moses to, to go and set the people free. And that's a whole other uh, chapter there because Moses um, was born at a time that the, again the Egyptian pharaoh was very jealous and concerned about all these foreigners in his midst and so he wants the Hebrew babies killed but the midwives complain oh we, we don't get there the babies are already born by the time we get there so he wants them thrown into the Nile River um, long story short um, Moses is born to uh, 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 a Hebrew woman uh, who keeps his birth a secret as long as she could, finally puts him into a reed basket and sets him, uh, or puts him in a basket and sets him in the reeds uh, along the banks of the river, where lo and behold, who should find him there but the Pharaoh's daughter. She knows it's a Hebrew child, but she has pity on the child, 
Um, she takes him into her home, raises him as her own son. In, in an interesting twist, um, Moses' sister kind of watched the whole thing and said, oh, do you need a nursemaid? Oh, yeah, okay. So Moses' mother actually becomes his nursemaid. Um, so he's, he's, raised in, he's raised by the Pharaoh's daughter with all of the, the rights and privileges of, of, of being raised in the royal family. But he's also raised with an awareness of, of his own people, the Israelites. And um, at one point as a young man, he sees how the, his fellow Israelites are being mistreated, um, how one is being beaten by, a, uh, uh, by an Egyptian. He actually, uh, in a fit of anger, I guess you'd say, he kills the Egyptian. Um, he's, the act is seen, uh, and so he flees flees into the desert. He's gone like 40 years, uh, where, he, um, where he marries the, the daughter of, of, of Jethro and starts a family. Uh, and in fact, uh, he, uh, he recognizes that he is, a, uh, he is resident. In fact, the, the, the son, the, the, the one child that is born uh, to to Moses and Jethro's daughter. Moses' name, again, by the way, it means drawn, he, you know, I drew him out of the water, uh, which is literally uh, how he came to be. But he said, I've been an alien residing in a foreign land. That was the name, Ger, uh, the son, because he was an alien. Uh, and the Israelites are seen as aliens in this foreign land. And uh, they cry out to God. And God hears their groaning. God remembers the covenant that he had with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. In fact, at the end of the, the book of Genesis, um, Joseph said to the people, you know, someday God's going to take you back to, you know, the land of Canaan, the promised land. Because that was the whole thing from the very beginning with Abraham. I'm going to promise you land. I'm going to promise you a great name and to be a blessing to others and, a, and, and many descendants. And so they kind of got sidetracked. And again, this is this interesting thing that God, God's ultimate plans may be sidetracked by the things that we do and events in the world in this case. Um, but it, they definitely, God steers it back um, on track. And so um, the people are crying out in, in their suffering. God hears them and God decides to uh, send Moses. And we're going to uh, hear about that in the exchange with uh, uh, the conversation with uh, between God and Moses beginning tomorrow. What strikes me uh, about this is this idea of being a, a foreigner, um, being an alien. Um, in fact, later on, when under Moses they were able to escape from slavery in Egypt uh, and they were returning to the promised land, which took a, a long time, uh, God gave them uh, uh, his law. Uh, we think uh, most prominently of the Ten Commandments, but there were other things as well. Uh, and there in chapter 23, uh, they were reminding, again, the people of Israel, they've been freed from slavery in Egypt. They're going to retake uh, and, and uh, resettle the promised land that had promised to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And God says, you shall not oppress a resident alien you know the heart of an alien, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. And that's a theme that runs then throughout the rest of Israel's history, of, of being aware of, of strangers and, and aliens in their midst, because we were. That's, that's who we were. You know, the Exodus is, is this central event uh, in the Old Testament. And what strikes me, and I guess what I wanted to, to, for us to consider this morning, is how we live in a time when um, there is so much animosity, to put it bluntly, um, uh, surrounding uh, and against um, immigrants, illegal or otherwise, migrants, um, you know, people who are coming to this country. And I'm sort of reminded of how things started to turn uh, over a period of time against the Israelites. Uh, uh, in terms of how the Egyptians felt about them. Because when you think about our own situation, uh, unless you are, you know, pure Native American, um, 
we all came from somewhere. We were all immigrants. We all came to these shores. Uh, we all were foreigners in a foreign land. We all were aliens at one time, uh, or at least those in our family, uh, our ancestors who came uh, before us. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's, it's interesting to think in those terms that we kind of see, and so often this happens, not just in the Bible, but in history in general, how, how history repeats itself. Um, and we should stop and think about how we treat those who are trying to come to our shores, to, to come here in search of a better life, who come here out of fear because where they're coming from, it is just, in so many cases, just so awful and dangerous and violent um, that they, they seek sanctuary and a new, uh, and, a, and a hope for a new life in this country. That's certainly what brought, I'm sitting here in my offices and I'm, I'm looking up uh, in my office at, at the, the piece of coal that I keep, the picture of my grandparents. Um, you know, that I'm reminded, and I try to remind myself all the time, you know, that, that uh, my grandparents, you know, were immigrants to this, this country. They were, they, you know, they became American citizens and, and all of us born from them were born here and are Americans, but, but we came from somewhere else. We've all come from somewhere else. Um, and so we should really be um, aware of how we treat others who now come into our midst. And certainly our biblical tradition, our biblical heritage is to, to take care of the resident aliens, to take care of the sojourners, the strangers, um, because the Israelites were at one time aliens, and in a sense, all of us were as well. Well, we'll pick up this story uh, tomorrow, but let's close this morning uh, with Martin Luther's morning prayer. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. The Lord Almighty, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great start to your week and looking forward to continuing to look at this story as it develops in the days to come during our daily devotions. We'll see you then uh, tomorrow. Take care. Bye.